What's up, everybody? I'm Jeremy, and you're watching Warples Morse. This week's video, you're probably thinking there's something different about this, the way this looks. This looks like a live stream, Jeremy. It is, but it's not. <laughs> um, we're doing our pre-recording on uh, StreamYard, but I kind of have to do that, do it this way, just so that way you guys can see what I'm doing, because this video is going to start our my walkthrough of showing you guys how to set up your Husbandry Pro how to do different things on Husbandry Pro. Um, I thought it was only fitting that since we are now partnered up with Husbandry Pro that, you know, I kind of put out some content showing you guys how to use this awesome software, how to implement it and make the most out of using it. So uh, that's what this video is going to be. This series is even going to be on. We're going to be covering a whole bunch of different stuff throughout this series, folks. And if you guys have any ideas, you know, during watching any of these videos and walkthroughs of things you would like to see drop them in the comments that way i know what you guys want to see content wise for this series um before we get into diving into setting up your husbandry pro and how to do it and some of the nice little settings that you can adjust and uh tune to your liking do me a favor folks hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell hit the like button drop me a comment down below like i said let me know what you guys want to see out of this series because I know what I want to show you guys. Maybe there's something you guys want to see that I'm not thinking of already. But who knows? Maybe we're all on the same page. You know, you never know. Anyway, also, I want you guys to check out our sponsors of this week's episode. If you want to use the best reptile record keeping and tracking software on the market today, scan the QR code or click our partnership link in the description down below for a free 30-day trial of Husbandry Pro. I promise you, you will not regret it. Gettysburg Reptile Expo LLC is located at the All-Star Event Complex in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's a 45,000 square foot venue with 125 plus vendors and top quality breeders, along with 270 plus tables. If you're looking for a python, boa, colubric, gecko, lizard, or amphibian, you've come to the right place. It doesn't matter if you're a breeder looking for that missing piece to your project or a pet owner looking for your next scaly friend, Gettysburg Reptile Expo LLC has you covered. Need an incubator or rack system? They have you covered with sea serpents set up there to meet all your needs. The next show dates are March 18th, July 15th, and November 11th of 2023. Show times are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Make sure to check them out on their website, Instagram, and Facebook. Mark your counters because this is one show you don't want to miss. So I'll see you at Gettysburg Reptile Expo, LLC. I'd also like to thank Nathan at Infinite Possible Pythons for sponsoring this week's episode. If you need a ball python, corn snake, gecko, or if you have any branding needs, he has you covered. Check out his links in the description down below. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for sponsoring this week's episode. Husbandry Pro, you guys, like, like I said, you know, you guys got to check it out. Either scan the QR code that was just flashed a couple seconds ago or click our partnership link. So that way Husbandry Pro knows that I sent you. Um... I, that's I'm just like I really want to show them, hey, I'm really pushing this awesome product, and yeah, you know, I, I want them to know how much I actually love using this stuff and how much I want you guys to love using this stuff. So let's dive into this video because uh, you're probably thinking, come on, Jimmy, just show me, just show me how to set this thing up. So let's dive into it, and I'm going to share my screen. And going to kind of walk you guys, you know, how to set different things up, how to set your up your tables for your animals, change some settings. We're going to it's going to be a multiple part series, folks. So let's just dive into this. All right. I'm going to share. Oh, I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully this is all working out fine and dandy. So, uh, all right. What we're going to do first is. OK, so here is my dashboard. It shows me all sorts of neat, fancy, you know, neat, fancy things. Um we're not going to really worry about this right now. What I want to show you guys is, first of all, because everybody, you know, you're going to have to import animals and add animals and all that stuff. Here's my list of animals. Uh, let me hide that. All right. Now, you can either have, have your list of animals like how I have mine set up, which I will show you how to have your setup like this, where it shows your animal ID, your animal type. Um, the sex of the animal, the descriptor, you know, it's just a brief short form of what it is, date of birth, if you enter that. Um, and then you can also set it up to where you can see a small picture of said animal. 
And then you can also have it set up to where it shows its exact rack location. So that way you know which rack to go to and which bin that animal is in. Super important. Um, I highly suggest you use that. Uh, as you can see, like, you know, I've got mainly it's all ball pythons. Uh, the, you know, there's the carpets. So, um, you know, you can set it up. It's really nice how they have everything done up here on this. Now you can use this view. Or if you go up here to where it says table view here on this right hand corner, and you can change it to grid view, which is now going to turn everything into these bigger tiles. It basically lets you see a bigger, a larger image of each animal. Now, granted, you have to upload the images of the animal so that way you can see the animal, or you end up with, you know, what you see here, a just a husbandry pro logo because I have not uploaded anything for that female yet. Um, you know, slacking on some of the stuff, but, you know, it, it's just a matter of, I just got to take, take a snapshot. Um, no big deal. But I thought I liked this view the best until I found out I could do my table view, which I really love because this is where you get to see, you know, the rack location. And I can still set up to where I have these nice little images of the snakes. Um, really love this view. So let me show you guys how to do that first. Because it's just going to make it a whole lot easier to have this set up off the start instead of you going through adding animals and then having to go back and find all this stuff. So first of all, we're going to go into general settings. And here, this is like, this is some important stuff, folks. So make sure you guys do this first. You know, you can obviously select your date format, all that stuff. That's whatever. Um, enable your color rack bins. You can go like here are your male colors you can pick anything under the sun females you can pick anything under the sun if you don't know the sex of it yet anything under the sun just it makes looking at your racks through husbandry pro so much easier because you get to see you know if you're looking for a certain male and it's surrounded by females boom it stands out like a sore thumb um very nice feature, simple feature, but very, very important. You can set up your temperature unit here. Uh, you know, there's just a whole bunch of odd, odds and little settings here. Just go down through, select what you want to use. I definitely suggest if you're doing frozen thaw, use a low feeder notification. Uh, I have that enabled on mine. I think that's very important. Allow selecting a feeder item on rack view. That's up to you. You know, all these things are up to you if you want to enable them or not. Uh, just because I don't have it enabled doesn't mean you guys, you know, can't enable it. Uh, here's the one important thing. If you're thinking about using husband, the QR codes, like here, I'll show you here. Like I can use my QR tags. You can take these, set these on uh, your displays at shows. People could come up, scan the QR code just with their phone, um, you know, using the camera on their phone, and it will pull up the animal's info. So uh, let me try. Let me do it here real quick for you. Um, one second. Bloop. Scanned it. Clicked the link. And boom. Now you can set what people are allowed to see, like what features. It just basically allows people to see, you know, records for that animal. And it helps to answer, you know, some questions, you know, at shows. You know, instead of having to answer, well, when was the last time the animal fed? You can just tell them, hey, scan the QR code. It will tell you everything you need to know. These things are very, very nice. And I will also do another video to show you how to make cards custom. Um, it's not hard at all, but that's going to be a whole nother video, but definitely this feature I'm going to show you how to set up will enable you to implement these at shows. And it, it, it to me, it adds a whole nother professional look. So let's go back into screen sharing here. And so what you want to do is you want to enable the use of URL public accessible QR codes, and then you want to enable the view public page. And then you can put up your business name on it, you know, all that good stuff. Um, then you can latest activities. You want to have that enabled and you can select the activities you want to be able to show. So say I want to show feedings. Um, I want to show weights. 
I want to show, I mean, it's up to you. You, you can show whatever you want to show. You can show skipped feedings. Uh, you know, I don't know what else. I don't know if you can share the photo, which I, that probably wouldn't be a bad thing. That way people do know that this is that animal. Um, let's see here. What you could do, you know, reproduction if you want you know you, you can add in whatever you want to add in that's actually a new feature um that we that had just apparently got added since we did the live with robert here not that long ago so awesome that they got that put in there because that is new um so now you can limit how many uh activities it will show you know when any animal is scanned you know, you can pick all that uh, ascending, descending, you know, the order it falls into. And then it gives you some more stuff that you can turn on here. So turn on what you want, what you don't want, you know, just disable it. It is totally up to you. Um, animal last weight, show last weight. You know, you, you can go through, just read all these options, folks. Disable what you want to disable, enable what you want to enable. But to use the QR codes for the shows, you definitely have to have this URL public access QR code stuff turned on and set the view public page. So that way any customer can see, you know, go up, scan that code and pull up all the animals information. And then once you have all everything set up to how you want it, then you hit save changes. Boom, save. So now when they go and they scan that stuff, all that information is going to pop up and it, it will make your show life a little bit easier. Um, it, it's it, it's a game changer. I'm not gonna lie, folks. I definitely like just for that aspect and for the shows. It's husband for husband G Pro. It's just fantastic with all that stuff. Um, all right, we'll go down here to uh, let's see here table settings. Now this is what we're gonna get into. You know, remember how I had my uh, label my animal list here. Um, let me show you guys again here. Like with this, you know, remember how this is because you this is where we're going to be able to change all of this stuff. So we're going to go back down here to settings and then table settings. Now, here you can, here where it says animals table layout. Anything you want to show up on that table that I just showed you, this is where you select it. So animal ID, obviously you want that on animal name. That's totally up to you. Animal type, totally up to you, but I would highly suggest it. Sex, obviously, is probably a given. Descriptor is obviously a given. Date of birth, up to you. Um, featured, up to you. Action, that's up to you. I would suggest having some of those things on there. You know, Featured photo, that is there is how you have, and that table layout, like how I'm using mine, that's how you get the little photo of the animals um is having that selected so if you want to have a featured photo there so that way instead of having to have the grid view you can use the table view that's how you still get enabled to have you know a picture there um feeding interval up to you last feeding date up to you all that stuff is up to you location that is where they're at the very end of my menu it tells you the exact rack the exact you know level and what bin it's in gives you the whole location so that way you know where to find that exact animal when you're looking for it through your rack so i highly suggest enabling that so once you do that you know there's so obviously some other things here you can change around you want to click save table so then all those settings that you had just selected will then be saved now if you go back and you don't like how the set how it looks Go ahead and come back and change all this stuff. You know, get rid of something if you don't want it. Add something if you want it. Whatever. Play around with it, folks. Um, and, you know, you'll eventually find exactly how you want your table there with your list of animals to be set up. You know, quick activities. Boom. Here's some stuff that you can click, change, all that good stuff. Um, incubation table layout. Boom. There you go on that. You know. Add it, you know, enable what you want, disable what you don't want. It's totally up to you, folks. Uh, let's see here. Browse activity table layout. Again, select whatever you want. 
breeder loans i don't have any breeder loans so i really don't need to worry about that at all i haven't even toyed with that at all so that is that um feeder table layout you know there again whatever you want to keep track of with that um contacts that's totally up to you i do have some of my contact stuff set up i didn't go super in depth with it but hey um when you're purchasing animals it's nice to be able to go and you know stick that the breeder's information in there so that way you have it on file um that's just what i do i think it's super handy granted i don't get too wild and crazy with where i'm purchasing from i kind of stick you know to certain couple certain you know a couple certain breeders and that's about it but it's there um so make use of it because it's definitely a very nice feature now your next thing so all right you have that all set up you know you can go up here to your list of animals here and then you'll get to see you know you'll see how it all changed this now obviously i'm not gonna change around all sorts of stuff on my table because i have it how i like it set up but you know there again you know i'll show you the difference between the table view and the grid view so whichever suits you best go with it so i'm gonna go back to my table view now browse racks here's my racks um, you notice there's an, all, an awful lot of empty spaces because I don't have full complete racks, even though I entered them in as full complete racks. I'm um, just because at some point they will be full complete racks because I use ARS hybrid stuff. I just buy what I need as I need it. So there is my racks. Uh, you can you know change the view of how you want to look at them, vertical, horizontal, however. And then you can list racks. You know, there you go. You can edit them once you've already had them entered. Uh, add rack. This is where you enter in, like you name your rack. You know, as you can see there, you know, I've got my stuff all set up there. Rack style, standard, uh, predefined, complex, you know, however you want to do it. Rows, you enter in how many rows um, your rack is high. And then columns would be how wide it is. So how many tubs you have on each row. And then you can put it as active and active and then save changes. That's how you add in your racks. And then that's also where you, it comes into play with where, where your animals are at in your racks. You know, probably want to set the racks up first before you set the animals up. So that way you can put the animals in the racks as you upload them. So you can add racks like that. Browse cages. I don't have cages done. Um, I do have, you know, the carpets and cages. I'm going to toy with that at a later date. You can list cages. You know, there again, I don't have that done. Browse groups. Here, you know, this is maybe a more easier way to go about for the animals that are in cages like you can list all your carpet like for me carpet pythons they're the only ones that are in cages because the ball pythons are in racks um anything that's in cages that you have species wise just make a uh an animal group for it so um to do that you would go down here to add group and then you can just name the group um select the animals that you've already pre-entered add them into the group and you can order them you know however you want to do it and then save changes and then when you go and you go to browse groups each group of a set of a, each group of animals will show up here like if i had blood pythons blood pythons would be the next selection um I didn't bother doing a thing for ball pythons because ball pythons are the majority of everything and they're handled by the rack stuff. So that is why that is the way it is. The next thing, you go to feeders. Right here is my list of feeders. And, you know, like mine's a little vague to say the least. Um, I have some stuff put in there as for the cost i need to get a little bit better with that um and actually go through and enter in the price of the at of the feeders but feeders were changing in price that much there for a little bit that i just it was i didn't feel like adding that in um and then here's the quantity if you notice like i've got some negatives here that stuff there is all live rodents that i purchased so obviously i don't have those in stock um but positive numbers you know these are stuff that 
I have in stock in my freezer right now that I'm chewing through. So there is that. Um, now, when you want to add, like here, you can add a feeder group, like you do rats, mice, all that good stuff, whatever, you know, however you want to set it up, this is where you would do it. Um, add feeder. Now here, you know, you can put the feeder name, green to rat, lot, you know, whatever. Or you, you get like, here's where you put like live rat, live mouse, you know, for the feeder name. And then you go down here to the size, you would select, you know, large, small, medium, weaned pup whatever you know pinky um you can add in the weight if you want that's totally up to you the cost totally up to you as well um quantity here is something where you know you go and you type it in you know definitely do it when you do get a fresh order it definitely makes it a lot easier to do it that way so uh but yeah you type in you know how many you have so that way your low feeder notification kicks on when you tell it when you know when it's supposed to which you know here you know there again low stock notification you can set how many you know rodents as you can get down to before you get that notification and then you can put down your supplier if you want you know that's totally up to you it doesn't really much matter um i don't i don't even know if i put that in there and then of course you know you can do a description if you so choose uh, bulk update feeder to animals, you know, if you want, uh, you click that, you know, whatever, and then save changes. So that is that, that's how you set that up as well. Um, there again, you know, there is the list of feeders that you would have gone through and entered. You can see how I have mine done there. So that is basically the easy you know, the, the most direct, the things that you guys need to worry about getting set up off the start is that. All right, now that we've got that all set up, now we can go ahead and start importing our animals or adding our animals into our list and inventory on Husbandry Pro. There's two ways to do it. I'll show you both ways, and let's just get in right into it. Now, if you're going to be bringing in animals from another uh, tracking system, uh, right now, the best, the only one that you can import in from is reptile scan i guess this is one of the more popular reptile tracking softwares of there along with husbandry pro but obviously husbandry pro i think does everything a little bit better i don't have any personal experience with reptile scan but i can't imagine it's any better than husbandry pro so you would click on that and then you would just follow you know whatever it's asking you to do i don't have reptile scan so i can't really you know help you out on that aspect as to where to go from here but to get to that you go to utilities and then reptile scan import so that's how you do that now if you're not going to import animals from reptile scan your only other option is at this moment of you know making this video they may add in other methods uh afterwards but then you have to come up here to animals and add animal so let's go ahead and go through this process of adding an animal in one by one because that's probably what most of the people that are getting husbandry pro are probably going to be doing so let's dive into that so you go up here to animals and you know we'll click on animals here i did have it opened up but hey and then we want to go down to add animal and here this is what this page starts out looking like this is where you are able to start adding in your animals so let's go ahead and take a look at what you can and what i think you should add in for information for when you're adding in all of your animals now obviously i'm not going to fully you know go in and, and add an animal that doesn't exist at the moment but here you could you know you can select the type you know i have ball python or my carpet pythons actually you know what let me do something here once you can where is it at here you can go to that's not it what am i doing what are you doing jeremy what are you doing animal settings okay here you can enable any types of species that you're keeping you can turn those on um and it's just same as here you know you can turn on lizards or actives, you know anything you want to do you can custom put custom groups in um you don't have to just use this for your animals you can use it for other things um you know, it's just all in how you implement the software. 
but you know turn on whatever types of animals you're working with for me i'm using doing ball pythons and carpet pythons uh carpet pythons was something i had to add in myself because it wasn't in there originally so that was a custom field that i added um but anyway so we'll go back here to add animal so go through and do all that stuff there you know select whatever species you're working for what working with but here you know select whatever you want to you know whatever you're importing or adding into your uh, list there so we're just going to say ball python whatever animal id you're using for it enter it there um you know like one two three four you know whatever um animal name if your animal has a name you can name him claude uh you know i i, I totally have to use select male female unspecified that would be if you don't know the sex of it at the moment animal descriptor you know odyb desert ghost you know whatever you can shorthand that because it doesn't have to be super specific or you can be super specific it's up to you genetics here is where you can enter in the specific genetics so we're going to say it's an orange dream uh let's see here orange dream leopard exantic because we all know i love my exantic as you can see you know it comes up like it comes up with all the lines of exantic you know 50 percent say you know all this awesome stuff so make sure you pay attention to which one you're selecting as well you know it also does the same thing for like the orange dreams that are either super orange dream um you know just pay attention to what you're selecting so that way you get your genetics right because when you're doing the breeding stuff this all plays into the breeding tables the breeding plans all that stuff but we'll dive into that in another video so all right we've got our genetics in there you can select if you produced it acquired it whatever put your date of birth in the sire's id now this is more for the like you can enter the id in and once you enter the sire if you still have the sire once you enter his data in um the genetics and all that stuff can fill in um or you can wait you know to enter the sire for later it's up to you however you want to do it but you can enter that like you know i already spirit i have all my stuff in there you can just put in that and that will enter that male and his genetics into uh that section um location here's where you can select which rack it's in so say all right we're gonna put in my 1065 rack here i can go and i can pick which tub exactly that animal is going into so you know there you go on that one and then you know any notes you want to add to it you select your feeder well I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that here as well in a second but you can you know make your own selection of feeder rodents or you know chicks whatever you're feeding your animals here's where you can select the sizes you know like I, you can see I have multiple rats and mice, you know, some live. Uh, if it doesn't say live to it, it's frozen thawed. Um, it's just, you know, that is my whole selection of what I've encountered that I've had to use so far. So I select whatever I'm going to use. We'll just say small rats. Um, you can select how many you feed. Every time you feed that animal, I, I would only be feeding one to this animal. You can select, you know, turn on feeding notification. You can do interval days or weekdays so weekdays would not count the weekends interval days is just you know seven day would be seven days a week type of deal um so for me depending on the size of it i would enter in you know 14 if it's above my weight threshold for feeding every two weeks so uh, we'll enter in 14 saying you know the animal is 800 grams um so there you go on that so now every 14 days after i feed this animal i will get a notification and i will show you where the notifications pop up here once we get through this setup so um yeah so you have that set up you'll get a notification every 14 days when that animal needs to be fed you can select you know if you want to feature this animal if the animal's for sale that'll bring up a whole nother selection there where you can add in your pricing and that part there will come into play with the store uh, we'll cover the store in a whole nother video as well. So if you're planning on selling the animal, 
enter in the information now so that way you just don't have to go back and do it you know a whole nother step again so just go and enter that if that's what you need to do if you're not planning on selling the animal for a long time don't even bother filling it out then and then photo click on that you know you can add multiple photos of it just with this add image but you click the add box there it'll bring up a screen you know like for me i'm on my computer obviously so i can go through find the image of that animal and insert it and if i want to add three four images of that animal you just keep at hitting add image and it'll give you another box to fill up uh, let's see here tags i'm not really sure what the tags is for i'm not gonna lie um maybe it's like keywords possibly i'm not sure um and then weight unit you know obviously uh, most of ours you know with breeding snakes it's in grams so i have grams selected and then you can turn on notify on event which you know that's up to you so uh yeah and then once you have this all set up all filled into how you want it you then hit save changes and once you save changes that animal will then end up in your animal list which i'm not going to save changes because i don't want a made-up animal in my list and then have to archive it all that you know just don't want to, have to deal with that but that's how you insert your animals um i highly suggest if you have a larger collection it's or i'll put it this way if you think you don't have enough animals to Im implement or justify using the software now is the time to jump on the bandwagon and get into it because the longer you wait the more animals you're gonna have to go through that process of doing it's not that hard don't get me wrong it's just a little time consuming and gets a little repetitive um you're gonna probably wish you had an alcoholic beverage you know part way through but it, i didn't mind doing it it just takes a little bit of time you just got to go with the flow and you know deal with it so uh i was saying about the uh oh with your, your notifications so we'll pop up here that i've got since the time of filming this um it's actually on a friday now which i feed on friday so i've got a crap load of feeding notifications so here you can see, you know, there's all my notifications saying, hey, I got to feed 33 animals uh, tonight, which is, you know, Friday night. So I've got to feed 33 animals tonight. So that's where that pops up. M messages here is for like uh, a lot of my uh, pairing information pops up there when it's time to pair an animal. It pops up into that message section. Um, that's really the only thing I've had, you know implemented to where it pops up there so uh, definitely you know and make use of all of this stuff the feeding thing definitely make use of that because it saves your guesswork uh, so that's basically going to cover what i want to go over for this video um let me get back to here so that's basically going to cover this video folks i can't believe it's already been close to like 30 minutes already uh there's an awful lot of information to go through with this software and just be ready because everything that I go through is probably going to come up to almost this time frame for this series. So if you got to, you know, watch it in intervals, do so. Try to watch every minute of this, though, because if you don't, you might miss something that you want to know. And then when you comment down below saying, hey, I want to know how to do this, I might have already covered it in a prior video. Um, so, yeah. Definitely make sure you guys watch all these if you're thinking about using Husbandry Pro. If you want to know more about Husbandry Pro, uh, next video, I don't know what it's going to be on yet as far as for the series. It could be making the cage cards. It could be breeding plans. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff I got to go over with this. So I just want to get you guys started. This will give you guys, keep you busy a little bit, depending how many snakes you have in your collection. And, uh, I hope you really enjoyed it as well because I enjoyed going through it even and showing you guys how to set it up because I really believe in this software. Um, it's revolutionary. It's it's revolutionary, folks. It's game changing. It will save you so much time. It's I would say it's not even funny, but it is funny how much time it saves. Um, just being able to do bulk feedings, just the record keeping aspect in general, um, the ability to get the information out there in general um to customers is revolutionary it's amazing you guys will love the software so do me a favor if you haven't already please 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 hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell 
hit the like button and drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this first video of this series. And, you know, like I said, please give me that thumbs up because it helps our videos get out into the algorithm. And this is something where it needs to get out into the algorithm. And also, if you haven't already, check out our sponsors of this week's episode. And please, you know, if you're not working with Husbandry Pro yet and you're thinking about it, click our affiliate link in the description down below or scan that QR code that was in the beginning of the video. Scan that, click our partnership link, you know, whichever, and it'll get you a free 30-day trial for Husbandry Pro. And then if you decide to keep it from there, you know, obviously you'll carry on with whatever plan you select. I highly recommend using the software there, folks. Um, you know, I'm my collection's still small, and I'm so glad I'm using it at this point. So take that take that for all it's worth. I will constantly, I will keep continual, I will can I will keep using this software until I'm out of this industry. So that's gonna be it. I'll catch you next time, everybody. Later.